economically speaking, the best way of protecting your tourism industry from any outside shocks is to boost your domestic tourism. Because you can never control what goes out on the outside. You can never control the, the appearance or the occurrence of any crisis in or out. But you can always count on the fact that the people that live in the country know it better and they're going to continue to travel and they're going to continue to do it. You know, as a visitor and as a tourist, you and I, when we go to places and we, we go to places where we see people that are happy, people that are enjoying it. You don't go to, want to go to places that are miserable or where you see people that are not really happy. It's not a pleasant experience anyhow. One of the major issues, I think, for the continent is, obviously there's 54 countries and the countries have to compete for tourism dollars. In today's world, there is no one destination that can make it on its own. Nowhere around the world can one destination say, all the surrounding destinations are competition with me. More people coming to Kenya would be more people coming to West Africa even. More people coming to South Africa means more people coming to Namibia, to Botswana. This is how the world is being uh, transformed today. The more people that come to Africa, the more people, all African destinations will benefit from that uh, regard. So we should not see inter-African competition as threatening each other, to the contrary. We, can, we must compete on quality, on, on, on many other things, but any good thing for Africa is good for everybody in Africa. But there are other barriers to tourism beyond just bringing people here. It's about making sure that there are facilities and the right infrastructure available for when they get here. You're absolutely correct, but I would not overvalue, overdo that, over-exaggerate that. What we should be more concerned with is how welcoming, how friendly, and how pleasant the experience is. You know, we should distinguish between the concept of quality and the concept of luxury. I think we sometimes tend to confuse uh, what people expect with modern standards. We think that everything that's modern, flashy, uh, and uh, up-to-date is going to create more attraction. That is not true. I've been to places around the world where there is no central heating. I've been to a country like Bhutan in January where it was freezing and there was no heating because they insisted on heating the traditional way by putting the cool and, and distributing the heat to the rooms through pipes. And I enjoyed every bit of it. It's a different experience. Mm -hmm. You don't need to change to please people, especially on some of the issues that can demonstrate and can exhibit one of your best authentic cultural features or traditions. People travel from one place to another not to see the same thing, not to see the same hotel room or the same architecture. They travel to see a different scene, a different environment, a different architecture, and a different experience altogether. And I think that is what should be ingrained in the minds of investors and, and tourism product developers. They should, yes, provide for good hygiene quality, for good standards, for good safety measures and everything, but they should not fall into the trap of trying to make the same scene that you can see in London, Paris, Geneva, right. or, or right. Uh, right. Hong Kong. And sometimes they do fall into that trap. Or they do all the time, yeah. and they think that's what, that's what tourists want. That's not what tourists want. That's not, exactly. How does Africa move forward in correcting misconceptions abroad? The best way about going about this is not to be defensive about it. Be yourself. Instead of trying to be defensive and try to waste your energy in combating negative images, negative stereotypes, project your positive stereotypes in return. In a position of one negative story, we can present a hundred, a thousand positive stories. That's the best way of doing it. We're not going to be able to just handle everything that we think we don't like to. But on the other hand, there is so much goodness that comes out of Africa that can be and must be projected. As a matter of fact, I would even use some of the negative stereotypes and turn them ironically into positive things to my advantage. Like? When people talk about chaos, uh -huh. I would talk about being uninhibited, about being creative, about just turn the same symptom that is being targeted into a positive connotation because there is something positive about everything that happens in Africa.